so today I'm going to be showing you how to make another or a food web for your next lab so you're going to be getting a template it'll say template two of two and template one of two okay and these two pages you should cut out and when you cut them all out you'll get pieces like this so I am going to cut out template two right now. And these are all of the organisms that you can find in your student reader, in the organism guide, and on the rough draft of your lab report. So our food web today is gonna be a forest ecosystem. So you're going to have animals that we find all around our general area, like skunks and groundhogs. We don't necessarily see mountain lions in Clark or Rawway or Linden, but if we were to go up into the mountains of New Jersey or even of Pennsylvania, you might see a mountain lion. We also have our decomposers. Remember that decomposers are animal, or organisms I should say, that break down dead and decaying animal parts. So keep that in mind as you're working on your lab. In our student reader, we've already completed a chart that tells us what animals are herbivores, which ones are carnivores, which ones are omnivores, what our producers are, and what our decomposers are. So you're gonna to need to use that chart to help you with this lab, okay? Now, as you can see, we don't have any sun cut out. Does that mean that the sun is not involved in this food web? No, the sun is involved, but on food webs and food chains, you don't really need to sit there and put the sun on here. So we are going to, for today, either draw our own sun if we want, or we can leave that out for the moment, okay? So we are going to just work on a food web. This is poster one. Poster two is gonna ask you to do something completely different. So we're going to sit here and we're gonna organize. I know a mountain lion is gonna be a carnivore. It only eats other animals. And I know from looking at my chart that the mountain lion is going to eat maybe my groundhog. I have another coyote, which is gonna be another carnivore. So I'm gonna lay my carnivores or my tertiary consumers towards the top. I'm going to put my omnivores and secondary consumers towards the middle. And I'm going to put my herbivores down towards the bottom. And I'm going to put my food source, my producer, below that as well. And then I'm going to put earthworms, fungi, and bacteria, centipedes, millimeters. These are my decomposers. These are going to go into a different part of my food web. Once I'm done with that, I can glue or tape these organisms down. And once they are glued or taped down, Right now, I'm just gonna put a tiny little piece of tape. And once that's all done, I'm going to then sit and draw the arrows connecting all of my organisms to each other. Ideally, you would like to do this in pencil first and then using some sort of Sharpie marker or Crayola marker, you're going to outline those arrows in the marker, okay? So take a few minutes work on this piece first, use your organism guide and the template of which animals are consumers and producers from your student reader to help you. Don't forget to give your poster a title and to make sure that you have all of your organisms labeled, producers, decomposers, uh, herbivores, carnivores, etc. Okay, have fun. So I've just worked on the food web and as I'm working on it, I double checked the guide and I started thinking, hmm, what does the groundhog eat? Well, if the groundhog doesn't eat tree nuts and seeds, 
and I don't have any other pictures, what am I going to have to do? Well, your group is going to have to take some green construction paper, some blue construction paper, some yellow, some brown, and you're going to have to add those other pieces that we didn't give you a picture for. So the sun, trees, grasses, water, soil, things like that, and add them to your food web by drawing them, okay? Take a few minutes, work on those pieces, and put it all together. Okay, so once you're done with your food web, and it's going to look something like that, you're then going to take one more set of templates, which will give you pictures like this. You're going to need more green paper, more blue paper, more yellow paper, and brown for the soil. And you're going to need to make a second poster that shows this exact same food web. But... This time, you're also going to need to show not just how energy moves, because that's what a food web is showing, but also how matter is moving. All of those non-living components, like our air and our water, and how some of our um, producers, like trees and grasses and uh, the seeds, all get our um, energy at, from matter and how that matter is moving. So. Once you have that and a new piece of poster board, you are then going to put it together. Now I chose to color code my map again. So I still have my decomposers, producers, herbivores, omnivores, and carnivores, but I have to have two different color arrows. So I chose pink to show the exchange of matter and blue and purple for matter movement. So anything that's purple was once black on the first poster. I started there first. You could use black, blue, whatever colors you want, but one color needs to show the food web pictures or the arrows, and then in a nice neat way, show me how matter moves. So water, what does water do? Well, water transfers itself to the trees, and then it also transfers itself or gets drink and, drank by the animals and all those consumers. So it needs to have arrows pointing to all of those places. Air is being you know, produced and re reused and recycled throughout the ecosystem. And then you have all of your different types of carnivores and herbivores that they're going to the decomposers, what's happening with the decomposers, they're retrieving nutrients. So you have to really take your time and focus and think about how this ecosystem really works, okay? So once you have your food web done, on the second poster, you're then going to add in all those other pieces. And then you'll be able to compare food web number two to, once again, food web number one to see how they're different, okay? Take your time, have fun, and ask me questions if you're really, really, really confused. Bye, guys.